Today's video is powered by Hawpog. Skip it a button, that up. They told me, son, you're special. You were born to do great things. You know what? They were right. It was interesting watching this footage of Bioshock because it brings back a lot of memories. I remember playing the demo of the original Bioshock and this scene right here where you're in the water, the plane just crashed and and you're seeing the luggage and the debris and everything like that. And it's a cutscene at this point. And then you go up to the surface like you're seeing here and I think I'm still in a cutscene and I'm sitting in the water and I'd even think to touch the controller like a moron and I'm looking around and it looks gorgeous but I'm thinking okay this is great I'm I'm sitting here in the water and nothing's happening it just looks fantastic I'm thinking that this is a cutscene it's CGI and then I accidentally brushed my hand against the uh, analog stick on the Xbox 360 controller and I see my character move now keep in mind <laughs> I was kind of a noob to gaming again. Uh, I took a hiatus for the sixth generation. I, I mean, I owned the PS2 for a little bit. I owned the original Xbox for a little bit, but I didn't, I, collectively, honestly, I owned consoles for the sixth generation, maybe like four months out of the entire time. So when I moved the controller and I realized this is in, this is actual gameplay, this is in-game, this isn't CGI or pre-rendered, my jaw hit the floor. Uh, I remember that moment sitting in my ex-girlfriend and I and I's apartment and I was blown away before I even got into the gameplay of Bioshock. I, I just that that experience to me was one that I'll always remember, not even from a gaming perspective, but how something, you know, whether you see a play or a movie or a film, something so profound just hits you and you never forget it. And that was one of those moments. That was my first memory of Bioshock, and that was just the demo. Bioshock to me, the series, I actually am a big fan. I, I like Bioshock 2. Um, Bioshock 1, obviously, I like more, but Bioshock 2 is a great game as well. Really, to me, signified um, that gaming was a median, or medium, excuse me, not median, for everybody. Uh, the, the mature theme where, you know, you have this, you know, decrepit, crumbling utopia that Andrew Ryan created around you the the whole story the the twist ending that really makes your jaw drop just if you haven't played bioshock before i won't i won't ruin it for you but would you kindly play this game and you'll the story in it is absolutely amazing hint hint nudge nudge would you kindly now gameplay wise if you haven't played the original bioshock before the the most interesting thing with it yes it is a first person shooter but you have plasmids. Uh, you could shoot lightning out of your left hand. You could you could shoot lightning into the water where a bunch of splicers are and, and kill three guys in one swoop. Uh, you could have bees, literally bees, come out of your flesh and you could throw those bees at a, at, at a, at a group of splicers and have them sting them to death. It was, it was clunky. Now, even though a lot of people weren't blown away by Bioshock 2 because they were expecting that whole unique they were expecting to be as blown away as they were with bioshock one and i think bioshock two is unfairly kind of persecuted for not being mind-blowing when it was just a sequel that was meant to evolve the series not revolutionize it um bioshock one's gameplay was a little bit clunky uh, you can only have either your left hand up which had the plasmids or your right hand up which had the weapon and that, that could make the gameplay a little hairy at times uh but it was because it was such a unique concept and there were so many different ways that you could play through the game, even though I don't think it was, you know, that, that was the big thing they, they tried to sell the original Bioshock on was you could play the game whatever way you want to, which to a point, if you, I'll have my reviews linked below, is true, but there's just sometimes you got to use a certain kind of damn plasmid or something to get through a part of the game 
<laughs> you, you, you can't do uh, you can't always have your own unique twist on the gameplay but it was different enough that it stood out from every other first person shooter out there beyond the gameplay one of the other things that was cool is how they gave you a choice of what kind of person you wanted to become in Bioshock. Now, there, there, there's characters in Bioshock called Little Sisters. Now, you could either help them a, a, and cure them, but your little sisters uh, carry Adam, and Adam's like a coveted thing in Bioshock. And there's two things you could do. You could you could kill the little sister and harvest their Adam, um, or you could, you could cure them and save them from being a little sister, and you would get less Adam, but you also would have, you know, you would be considered a savior to them and you would get the better ending and that was although it was very rudimentary you know there wasn't like any gray area you were either a good guy or a bad guy um it was an interesting twist and something that also wasn't done often i'm not going to say it was revolutionary or something that was never done before uh but it was something that wasn't used often that was a unique twist that also made bioshock very interesting uh now visually even by 2013 standards um, it is looking dated somewhat, but Bioshock is still amazing. One of the big things with the original Bioshock uh, was the water effects. I remember even beyond that beginning scene, there's that scene where you're, you're, you're first going through that one underwater tunnel where you could see outside and, and it starts to crumble and you see the, the water rushing in and it looked, like I said, now you, you could kind of see the seams starting to crack a little bit, no pun intended, uh, but the, the water, looked real and it was such a, a surreal i can't think of a better word right now experience it felt so next gen visually so bioshock to sum it up the original bioshock was this perfect symphony of a fantastic story whether it was a rehash story from the original system shock which i can't say i haven't played the original system shock that's what i hear it had a fantastic story with a hell of a twist in the end, uh, beautiful visuals, uh, unique twist on the first person shooter gameplay, and, and great audio, great music, and you know, Atlas was a fantastic character, which you also find out a real shit shocker about it in the end of the game. Combine the fact that there's a hell of a lot of gameplay and a, a story that you'll never forget, Bioshock really to me was the pinnacle, even though it was only in 2007 and, and this generation was still relatively new, it was the pinnacle of the seventh generation. It, it showed at the time, even though now you know the consoles back then were considered powerhouses, it showed why you wanted a, at the time, next-gen console. I mean, granted, we're, these consoles now are in their twilight, but it, you, you need to experience, if you still haven't experienced Bioshock, and I know there's some people, I remember seeing the trailer for Bioshock uh, when they first, you know, revealed it. And I was like, what the hell is this? What the f- it was a big daddy. What, what is this thing with a drill in its hand beating the crap out of me? You know, and I went into Bioshock very skeptical until I played the demo. Uh, but it's a brilliant game all around. And this, is one, and this is one of the games that shows if you have the perfect blend of a great team of developers... Uh, and talent that you can make a game not only it shows that video games can be art but they could be fun as all hell you can enjoy the crap out of them and you could still leave with something emotionally like you just watched a great film by steven spielberg and that that's what bioshock proved it proved that gaming you know with the horsepower of you know computers and consoles if the talent's there you can make a profound impact on your audience and it wasn't and it proved that gaming is not just a child's toy now bioshock 2 was more of an evolution of the series it, it wasn't revolutionary like the original bioshock uh, was considered and i think it was unjustly criticized because people were expecting to be blown away twice and they weren't it was just you know a sequel of the original bioshock and i, I think it was unjustly attacked because it wasn't you know mind-blowing like the first time you entered Rapture. But what Bioshock 2 did was improve the gameplay of Bioshock. You actually play as a big daddy in Bioshock 2 known as Project Delta. And the nice thing about Bioshock 2, like I, I think I mentioned previously in this video, is that 
the gameplay of the original Bioshock was clunky because you could only use either your plasmid or your weapon one 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 of them at a time. You couldn't have both wielded. In Bioshock 2, as the Big Daddy, you could wield both a plasmid and your your weapon. You know, you could use your drill because you're a Big Daddy, Project Delta. You could use your drill and a plasmid simultaneously, and it really improved the pacing and, and the overall experience of Bioshock 2 and made, you know, battles and, and fights against the Splicers to put it bluntly, a lot more fun. It was a lot more enjoyable and you weren't constantly switching back and forth and it made engaging and it made combat more fluid and smooth. Uh, one of the other, one of the downsides is that I wasn't a huge fan of the, you know, Andrew Ryan in the second one, spoiler alert, he's dead, he's gone. It's eight years after the original Bioshock and the new nemesis in it is Sophia Lamb. I'm not going to go into the plot too much, but the, she wasn't, she didn't affect like Andrew Ryan. You and Lee will never forget him. Uh, if he was a character in the film, whatever actor would have played him probably would have gotten an Oscar. <laughs> but Sophia Lamb just you know the, it, it, she was okay. She didn't take away from Bioshock Two, but she didn't really. I feel like her character almost felt forced. Like they tried to make her the female Andrew Ryan. I mean, although her motivations were different. Uh, it just felt unnatural and it just didn't work. I have nothing against female, you know, antagonists in whether it be film or games. It just, for some reason, it just did not feel right. She didn't feel as fleshed out, like the writers didn't flesh her out like they did Andrew Ryan. Uh, but beyond that, uh, it, it was a great story. Um, they, I, I like how in Bioshock 2 they humanized the big daddies where they were somewhat, they were pretty much one dimensional. In Bioshock 1, they were just the guys who were a pain in the ass to kill. In this one, you, you, you kind of got a little bit of a backstory, and you they they made them someone you emotionally cared about. And it was still like it was still a well done game. Um, the visuals uh, didn't weren't as mind blowing once again because it was done before. But it was a great sequel. It was a worthy sequel, and because they're both so damn cheap. If you haven't played Bioshock yet, or even if the games, you know, you're, you're on the fence about them because of the gameplay you saw. I'm telling you, I saw, you know, before I even downloaded the demo, I saw a bunch of gameplay and I was like, eh, doesn't look like my cup of tea. And then I played the demo and beyond the visuals, it was so much fun. I was obsessed with Bio with Bioshock. It's interesting to look back now. Um, Bioshock to me, the series as a whole, and I already have infinite pre-ordered, uh, is one of the things that went very right there's many things that sucked with the seventh generation the the online passes the the soulless uh single player experiences because everything has to have multiplayer the the end, endless string of sequels but bioshock you know is one game that was a light in the uh very dark seventh generation of console gaming or gaming in general and it's a series that will stay with you forever. Um, even if you're not a huge fan of the gameplay, there's some people I know who I know personally in the real world who weren't huge fans of the gameplay, but they still love the game because just the, the atmosphere and story, and they just wanted to play through it to be part of that world. That that says a lot about you know the overall design of the Bioshock series. And so even if you aren't, you know, it doesn't look like it's your cup of tea, you'd be surprised. Pick it up. They're both dirt cheap now, whether it be for the PS3, 360, or PC. And I promise you, I promise you, you, you won't regret it. it it's an amazing series. And I hope that even, I hope that Bioshock Infinite even, you know, is a quarter as good as the previous two. You know, I love Bioshock 2. It wasn't as good as 1, but I loved it still. So this is my, you know, kind of take on the Bioshock series, a retrospective. And just wanted to share it with you guys. And I'm looking forward to March 26th. It's going to be a hell of a game, hell of a day. This is Rich Review Tech USA signing out. Have a good one.